Good morning. Good morning, my brothers and my sisters, people of Yah. Happy Shabbat. I was up for several hours um, since midnight. And um, what is it? it's about 3 a.m. now. So um, I was up studying and just talking to the Father. And um, I have put together some things that I want to share, discuss with my brothers and sisters. I'm simply tired of the lies and of the disrespect um, that I have experienced or received from some people who call themselves sons of Yah, who call themselves leaders, teachers, pastors of Yah. I don't see them as that. I see some folk who are the seed of Satan, the sons of Satan. Satan is the father of all lies. And I see people who portray themselves as my brothers and Yah. But my brothers and Yah are not liars. They are not disrespectful to their sisters. And so anyway, um, the truth shall set us free. It, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That is the title that came to me for this video. One wife. So that is what I'm going to be talking about. I had a brother who disrespected me a few days ago on one of my posts. I have blocked him with all kind of jargon. I didn't even read all of that stuff. If you feel like you know the word, then go and establish a platform because when I clicked on you, you have nothing. Go and establish a platform and teach the people from whatever spirit is leading you because we are not being led by the same spirit. You are not my brother. So I'm going to share with you all from the word of Yah, from several books of Yah, that it is not God's will for a man to have more than one wife. Let's start with the Bible. I'm going to start where I'm going to try to make this in within 30 seconds, 30 minutes or less. But if it goes over, then I'll just upload a part two, two videos because this is going to cut off after 30 minutes. So anyway, um, I'm going to start with the Old Testament um, in the book of Genesis chapter two. So you that have your Bibles, just we're going to be flipping from scripture to scripture. We're going to go from um, the Bible. Uh, which all of it is the Bible, but different sections. So we're going to go from the sections of the original Bible that most of us had. Um, I'll read from different translations. And then we're going to skip over to, um, what are we going to go to? We're going to go to the Book of Mormon, which is a continuation of the Bible. And for those of you that don't know, that are not, don't have the spirit, don't comment on here with your ignorance that don't understand the spirit behind this book. I am not a member of any religious group, religious organization. I do not support any religion. God is not religion. He is reality. And if you have been following me, you understand. And if you have eyes to see, you know that this is God's word. So you shall be led into it by the spirit. The spirit will guide you into all understanding. So we will go to that book and then we will end with the seal portion. I don't know if you can see this. The seal portion, final testament of Jesus Christ. So let's go to Genesis um, um, chapter 2, 24. And this is all I'm going to say on this stuff. At Once I'm done with this, I'm not going to touch back on this anymore unless I'm, I'm, I'm led to. But other than that, I'm not going to touch back on this. You that have an ear then you can hear. You that have eyes, then you see through God's word. So anyway, um, Genesis chapter 2. Let's go there. Genesis chapter 2. Uh, Genesis chapter 2. Okay, Genesis chapter 2. Let's go down to 24. Genesis chapter 2 and 24. Um, it says, therefore, um, well, let's go up to verse 21, where basically Lord made 
um, Eve for Adam, right? Because Adam was by himself. It's not good for man to be alone. So God made him a help me. So Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. And we're going to go down. We're going to just read all the way to verse 25. I was coming Genesis chapter 2, 24. That's what I got written down. But let's just go to 21 through 25. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now my, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. They were innocent. Their nakedness represents their innocent, both of them. And we understand who came in and deceived Eve. When you get the seal portion, you will understand our no good enemy. But Adam and Eve were innocent. And even though Satan deceived Eve, it all worked out for the good, right? It all turned out for the good. So his plan still did not work. But that's that's above what we're talking about. So anyway, God took a rib from Adam. Where is your rib? It's right under your arm. He took it right under from, from his arm, his rib, and he made woman. So the man is supposed to love his wife, cover her, protect her right? Adam was happy for Eve. He says she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So anyway, a, a man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife and the two shall be, they shall be one flesh. The two shall become one. That soul tie, that legal soul tie. A man and his woman. So anyway, Deuteronomy, let's go to Deuteronomy 17, 17. You see, we have folk who I consider the seed of Satan. And they are teaching, boldly teaching men that they are to, um, that they are allowed to have more than one wife and if your woman don't be quiet and keep her mouth shut and obey you then you leave or you supposed to rule and dominate over her not like that baby not like that that ain't love that ain't love the two supposed to get together in harmony so when you find people like that um um people who claim to be teachers of yah then you know that they are liars and Satan is the father of all lies. They are being used by their father, the devil, to cause enmity between the man and his woman and the woman and her man. The two shall be one flesh. Come together as one. Love on one another. Kill that lust and stop trying to hide it behind multiple wives. So Deuteronomy 17, 17. Um, you know what? I'm going to read this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this from the Good News Translation because I like how, I like how it, I'm going to read this, uh, Deuteronomy 17, 17 um, from the Good News Translation because I like how it is stated in here. Um, and this is basically where instructions are given concerning a king. So Deuteronomy uh 17, 17 is what I have written here. So it says, the king is not to have many wives because this would make him turn away from the Lord. And he is not to make himself rich with silver and gold. When he becomes rich, he is to have a copy of the book of God's laws and teachings made from the original copy kept by the Levitical priests. He is to keep, I'm going on, I'm going past that, right? 17, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and finish it out all the way through 20. Deuteronomy 17, 17. 
We're going to finish out the chapter through 20. He is to keep this book near him and read from it all his life so that he will learn to honor the Lord and to obey faithfully everything that is commanded in it. This verse 20, this will keep him from thinking that he is better than other Israelites and from disobeying the Lord's commands in any way. Then he will reign for many years and his descendants will rule Israel for many generations. Okay, moving right along. I'm at 10 minutes already. God, it don't seem that bad. Um, now let's go over. We're going to go over to the New Testament in the Bible. I'm going to go to 1 Timothy 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. One wife, baby. One wife. First Timothy 3. I'm in 2 Timothy. Okay, 1 Timothy chapter 3 and 2. Well, I'll go chapter 1. First, I mean, um, 1 Timothy 3, 1 through 2. Uh, First Timothy 3, First Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. It says, This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good thing, a good work. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. A bishop, <clears throat> verse two, a bishop then must be blameless. And in the Greek, blameless is aneptalous, meaning irreproachable, irrebukable. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, Given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine. I'm going on past verse two, so let's just go on to verse uh, three. Not given um, to wine, no striker, not greedy or filthy lucre, meaning he ain't crooked, but patient, not a brawler, not covetousness. Okay, so then we have it there again, one wife. All right, now let's go on to... Um, um, you know what? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read something that Paul, um, said in the book of Acts 20. Let me see, let me find that. Where Paul said in Acts 20. Acts 20. Acts 20. Acts 20, 20. Read something what Paul said. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Let's see what Paul said in Acts 20. Y'all bear with me. Bear with your little country bunkin sister. While I get this together. Okay. Okay, Acts 20. I want to read you um basically um Paul's farewell speech. I want to I'm going to read it from the Good News translation. Paul went through a lot to preach the gospel. Yeah, he went through a lot. Um and he dealt with a lot of folk. <laughs> he was he was a Christians that threw Paul in jail, persecuted by his own people, folk who were supposed to be brethren. But um, I'm going to read to you his farewell speech to the elders at Ephesus, um, Acts 20, and I'm going to start at verse um, 21. And this is what Paul is saying. Basically, this is his farewell speech. He's saying, to Jews and Gentiles alike, I gave solemn warning that they should turn from their sins to God and believe in our Lord Jesus. And now, 
in obedience to the Holy Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit has warned me that prison and troubles wait for me for preaching the truth, baby. But I reckon my own life to be worth nothing mm -mm -mm, to me. They love not their lives unto death. <laughs> Revelation. I only want to complete my mission and finish the work that the Lord Jesus gave me to do, which is to declare the good news about the grace of God. I have gone about among all of you preaching the kingdom of God. And now, and I'm reading from the good news translation. And now I know that none of you will ever see me again. So I solemnly declare to you this very day, if any of you should be lost, I am not responsible for I have not held back. So what he's saying is I didn't told you the truth. I didn't put the word out there. No, I'm pure. Nobody's blood is on my hand. None of my brother's blood is on my hand. So if, so I solemnly declare to you this very day, if any of you should be lost, I am not responsible for I've not held back from announcing to you the whole purpose of God. So keep watch over yourselves and over all the flock, which the Holy Spirit has placed in your care. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he has made his own through the blood of his son. I know that after I leave, fierce wolves will come among you and they are among us right now, baby. You can listen to how they talk to people, cussing and doing all this nastiness, speaking like they from a place of offense and, you know, like a rulership and such great rulership and such hatefulness and arrogance toward people. But Paul just said here to the Jews and Gentiles alike, I gave solemn warning that they should turn from their sins to God and believe in our Lord Jesus. Verse that was 20. One twenty, Acts twenty twenty one. But let me get back on to where I'm reading. Okay, where I stop at. But I, as I leave, he said in verse twenty nine. I know that after I leave, fierce wolves will come among you, and they will not spare the flock. The time will come when some men from your own group will tell lies to lead the believers away after them. Aren't they liars? Don't you see some liars telling lies now, coming against people who just diligently trying to answer the call of Yah. Folk been coming against me from the time I stepped back on this YouTube thing. And some of you remember because you've been rocking with me from then. I appreciate you. I remember I had just little 50 subscribers. I'm getting these emails, people saying all kind of nasty, disrespectful things to me, telling me I'm a traitor, all this stuff. For what? For what? With 50 subscribers. And some people not still being disrespectful, but I'm going to just keep blocking them and I'm going to keep following the spirit of Yah. Mm -hmm. Now look at what Paul is saying here. Verse 30, the time will come when some men from your own group will tell lies to lead the believers away after them. Watch then and remember that with many tears, day and night, I taught every one of you for three years. And now I commend you to the care of God. And to the message of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you the blessings God has for all of his people. Verse 33, I have not wanted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You yourselves know that I have worked with these hands of mine to provide everything that my companions and I have needed. Verse 35, I have shown you in all things that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak, remembering the words that the Lord Jesus himself said. There is more happiness in giving than receiving. Verse 36, when Paul finished, he knelt down with them and prayed. Verse 37, blessed are those who are persecuted. For righteousness sake, for they shall see Christ. Verse 37. They were all crying as they hugged him and kissed him goodbye. They were especially sad because he had said that they would never see him again. And so they went with him to the ship. Mm -mm -mm. Some of you felt that. 
Some of you felt that because the times we are in right now, you see what folk who are doing, folk who call themselves our brothers and sisters of the faith. We are not the same. There are some who are being led by a spirit of error and there are some who are being led by the spirit of truth. And those who are being led by the spirit of truth, they are simply following the guidance of the Holy Spirit of the true Ruach Kakadesh. And they don't know everything. We are still studying. That's how God gets all the honor and all the glory. It is the spirit that helps us put the pieces together and we ain't trying to set ourselves up above nobody. We ain't trying to lead nobody. We just trying to be obedient. It's folk that will come to you and tell you, you are this, you are that because they honor the spirit of God in you. You don't have to make nobody want to honor you. Anyway, but I just thought I'd share that. Let me get back to this thing. One wife, but I, but Paul went through it. So be encouraged, brothers and sisters. Look at this thing that's going. This time is moving so fast. This thing at 20 minutes, 21 minutes. I probably had to do two videos, three videos. But let me hurry up. So anyway, yeah. Did you feel that what Paul went through? Mm -hmm. That's what strengthens those of us. And we're going to continue to run on. <laughs> Paul just laid an example. See, the ancestors have done their work. You see? <laughs> That's one of the ancestors. They left their strength here in this earth by being obedient to the spirit of Yah. And the word of God is living. It's true. So anyway, let me get on. Um, I'm going to go to Titus. Yep. Let me go on to Titus right behind Timothy. I'm going to Titus chapter 1. And let's look at verse 1 and... We're going to go on down to, let me see, Titus chapter 1. We're going to go down to verse 8. So, and this is what Paul is written to Titus, right? So, verse 1. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is, God, which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, but have in due time manifested his word. He, so he's talking, you know, he's, he's about to tell Titus instructions, right? Um, for appointing um, elders who love what is good. So basically he's in verse three, but have in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me, according to the commandment of God, our savior, verse four, to Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God, the father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our savior, verse five, for this cause, I, <clears throat> verse five, for this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. For a bishop must be blameless. What, what I told you that Greek word? An eleptilus, irreproachable, unrebukable. For a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, not nor striker, not given to filthy lucre, being a crook, loving dishonest gains, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. Okay? 24 minutes. Yeah. That's what Paul said to Titus. Now, let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, where Paul is going to answer questions about marriage. Hmm. 1 Corinthians, not 2 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, baby. Just bear with me. Just bear with your little country bunkin sister. Okay. So here, um, Paul is going to answer questions about marriage. So he said, verse, um, 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 
Okay, let's just read it. We're going to read it several verses tonight. We'll read 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 um, through 5. Okay, we're going to go to verse 1 through 5. And I'm reading from this King James Version again. Um, now, concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, and so basically what he's saying is here is it's okay to be single. So some of you, you have people who have folk that are criticize you because you single, you know, you're keeping yourself. You are just enjoying your singleness. And there's some folk who claim and say very mean and cruel things to you. Oh, you this, oh, you getting this age, you ain't this. But Paul is saying here, it's good for a man not to touch a woman, meaning it's okay to be single. It's good to be single, but. Let's continue on. He said, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, because if you're burning with that desire, it's good to get married too. God created man and woman. And I think the worldly scientific research, I stand to be corrected, but I, I think I've seen something a while back where scientific research said marriage is more beneficial for a man and women who are single actually live longer. Yeah. But, you know, that's the worldly scientific research, okay? But when the man and together, woman come together and they are actually soulmate, when a man finds his rib, ooh, 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 ooh. your whole is that thing come together and it's powerful. That's why the enemy hates marriage. And he's doing so many things to confuse the order of God. But those of you who are the spirit, you're going to find your mate. You're going to find your soulmate. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let me get off that for those of you um, who are desiring that. It's common. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, that's what Paul is basically saying. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence and likewise also the wife unto the husband. So he's saying, basically, you satisfy each other's needs. You serve each other. You please each other. Mm -hmm. It go both ways, baby. Verse four, the wife have not power of her own body, but the husband. So the wife don't got basically saying when you when the two become one flesh, the husband and wife. So this ain't my body no more. This is now his body. Because you are married. He ain't your body no more. The wife have not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise, also, the husband have not power of his own body, but the wife. Verse 5. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time that ye may give yourself to fasting and prayer and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontent incontinency. So when he's saying defraud you not, what he's saying is basically don't withhold yourself from each other. You know, don't, don't withdraw yourself from each other. Don't deny um, your husband, his body, and don't deny your wife, her body, which I don't know, no man going to deny the wife that body. <laughs> Unless they in the house being petty or you wasn't giving it up and you ain't getting it for me then when you want it. But anyway, the two shall become one. Your bodies don't belong to you anymore. They belong to your spouses. So when they ready for that thing, you got to get that thing. But anyway, let me get off of that. So one, one wife, one wife. Everybody is consistently, even if you just have the Bible and you being led by the spirit, you know by the spirit that these folk is trying to push error upon you and lead you into error and those who are so dominant in that belief a lot of them are so mean they're misogynist they got a jezebel spirit they don't like listening to women about nothing they try to close women's mouth why because they want to rule and do what they want to do in error and a lot of them you probably have multiple wives if they got daughters they ain't got relationships with them they're leading folk in the error and they being nasty about it they being nasty about it. They keep coming on my thing, being disrespectful, and I'm sick of it. You're going to keep getting blocked. Now you've been addressed. This video about to stop. So, yeah, that was 1 Corinthians. We did chapter 7, verse 1 through 5, and I'm about to start part 2.
And we're going to close off this thing. Part two, baby, coming up. You should know the truth.